those emails that you guys seem to be getting about student faculty partners, that's, that's her. You can thank her for that. Michelle is our associate program manager. Um, she and Humayun will be co-teaching the last session and Humayun is, uh, is our student partner. So that's the team. Thank you everybody for introducing, well, letting me introduce you guys. Um, but today's agenda. So we have three sessions and we're about seven minutes into the first one. Um, this one will end at two inshallah promptly, uh, possibly before then, but I'll try and make it so that it doesn't go over time. We do appreciate you being here. So that'll go on till two. That's the session in clear communication. Uh, and I thought I'd make this as interactive as possible. Um, believe it or not, I don't like the sound of my own voice, so I hate to drone on and on. Um, and I've built the session to sort of allow for your input and feedback, um, and I'm open to it. So please uh, do participate, raise your hands, um, feel free to offer in your two cents. Uh, the next session is on uh, effective feedback, which Fatma will be delivering. And the last one is on course management. That's the one that Mushail and uh, Humayun are going to be going into. There's a 15 minute break um, within each, after each session, right? So there'll be a break from 2 to 2.15, and then uh, the next one will start at 2.15, and so on and so forth. And we'll try and wrap up promptly at 4.30. So, um, learning outcomes. What are the learning outcomes for this session? This session is meant to be a pretty relaxed sort of session. So you sort of sit back, relax. Um, there's really only two. My first and foremost responsibility, self-imposed, is to make sure that you're familiar with the RO policies around um, what TAs can do, what they can't do, um, what the roles and responsibilities are and what the guidelines are. And this includes both graduate and undergraduate TAs. Although you'll notice that there's not much of a difference between the responsibilities and roles of the two. Um, and then the second learning outcome is, uh, it is my desire that by the end of this session, I will have made it such so that the participants are aware of a few communication techniques that they can use to communicate with uh, both faculty members and with students, because it's a very different form of communication that happens with both. Um, so hopefully we'll go through a few scenarios. This isn't really meant to be sort of giving you techniques, but um, we're going to explore a few scenarios um, that you will most likely face as TAs that will help illuminate. Um, yeah, I was just reading the chat. Okay. okay, so those are our learning outcomes. Okay, before we get into this, let me, I just really quickly want to know um, how many of you had experience before uh, in TA. So you should see a poll on your screen right about now. Um, I'm going to give you guys a minute to answer it. Wow, you guys answered fairly fast. I can just see the numbers jumping across my screen. Well, we're 17 seconds into it. I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. We have 103 out of 114 who've answered this. 106. So I'm going to give it another 20 seconds, 15 seconds approximately. Let's make sure everybody's had a chance. Wow, our attendees just seem to be going up and up. Well, I'm going to end the poll now. Um, thank you for answering. I'm going to share the results with you. So, about 22% have TA'd once before, another 21% have TA'd several times, and 57% this is the first time. So a good 40%, 43% have TA before. You guys have some experience. You guys can leave. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I hope I can add some value for you guys as well. Um, but I, I feel like the value addition that you guys will benefit from is in the way of sharing your experience with some of our other participants. Uh, this whole session, this whole one hour session has been built upon uh, the experience of TAs 
that they have now shared with new TAs. There's a lot of literature out there um, and the literature that we've used has come exclusively, at, at least for this session, has come exclusively from other TAs. So this isn't something that faculty have been doing um, and you'll see that inshallah um, as we go on. So this next slide is the most text heavy and I wanted to get it out of the way, these next two or three slides actually. And these are not how you create slides. They're not supposed to have so much text, but um, my challenge was I needed to take the RO guideline and put it on the slide. Um, and I needed to make sure that all of you guys went through it. And so what I've done is I've put it all here in the form of a text and we'll give about a minute, minute and a half to each slide. There's about four of them. And they'll give you about four or five minutes, six minutes perhaps to go through all of the text. And that's where I need most of your patience. I promise after that, there will be no more text of this sort. Um, after you've gone through the text, then we have a Google form that we'll use to sort of make it more interactive and see how much of that you've absorbed. Um, based on your responses, that'll give me an idea of what to dive into for more detail, uh, especially for the first time TAs who haven't done this before. So um, that's our layout for the next approximately 11 minutes. So what is the workload for part-time TAs, um, particularly undergraduate TAs? I'm just gonna let you read it, unless somebody wants to volunteer uh, to read it for me, which would be really helpful for all of us. And if you want to volunteer, you can just raise your hand. Panelists, do we have any volunteers? I'm gonna give you another 30 seconds for this slide. Again, my apologies for, for so much text on the slide. It was either this or uh, share the RO PDF with you. And again, this is just a summarized version um, that they've summarized. If somebody wants me to go back to this slide, just let me know in the chat. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on. I'm trying not to read it out loud for you guys on purpose because um, the Google form will, you know, test how much of it you've comprehended. Don't be scared, but we'll talk about it later uh, afterwards. Panelists, if there are any questions, any raised hands, please let me know because um, I have full screen right now and I can't see it. All right. Thanks, Mario. Okay, so these are responsibilities for undergraduate TAs uh, and graduate TAs. There's not much. Maintain class attendance, quizzes, discipline. There's quite a few of these. And, and this is the mix for graduate TAs and undergraduate TAs. So um, it, you may find what may seem like contradictory information I won't get into which part is contradictory because uh, I want to test that later on, but I'll explain it uh, when we get to that point. Yeah, this is very brief. That's it, guys. We're done with all the tips.
Um, Manu, is there anybody who's asking us to go back and re-show some of it? Not at the moment. Manu, uh, can, I can't hear you. Uh, I'm saying that uh, like we can move forward. There isn't anyone who's requesting to go back. To All right, perfect. Well, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a Google form with you guys. And uh, I'm going to ask that you think back on what you just just went through, and uh, fill it out to the best of your ability. I'm just popping it in the chat window. Um, I'm going to give you about four minutes, five minutes to fill it out, and then we can go over some of those. Yeah? I think so that the form was only sent to all the candidates, so you have to open up. Oh, Fatma sent it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just did. Thank you, Fatma. So Fatma just shared the form with you guys. Um, take about four minutes, five minutes, fill it out. Think about some of the questions. The answers might not be as obvious as they seem. Since you guys had a very brief time uh, to go over a very dense four or five slides. Thank you, Fatima, for that time in the chat. So take about four minutes. I'm going to shut up so as not to disturb you guys. Um, I'll give you a time reminder two minutes into it. And if you have any questions afterwards, raise your hands, uh, please, and then we can just address it. So there's somebody here who's 967-2925-9297. Can I ask you to please um, change it to a name so that it's more easily recognizable? And there's somebody here who's just two dots. Um, and there's somebody else who's two triple one. If you can change your names, please, that'll um, help us. Yeah, there's also someone with CSTA. Please, could you change your name? And someone with Lenovo. Let's give it another minute, approximately. Yeah, about half of our respondents have responded so far.
Fatma, can you please resend the form to yes, I can. the chat window? Yes. Yeah, the questions do seem skewed uh, in favor of undergraduate TAs, don't they? Um, no, graduate TAs, feel free to fill the form to the best of your ability. Uh, like I explained, there's not much of a difference. As we're going through the responses, I'll touch on some points and explain where the added responsibilities are. Um, so, responding to anonymous attendee, um, can you, no, I, I'm not being funny, that's actually the name, it says anonymous attendee. So if you can just fill the form. Um, all right, let's give it another 30 seconds and then we'll wrap it up. All right, guys, so we have about uh, 119 responses, which is pretty extraordinary. Wow. And as you can see, the yeah, the, the first uh, question was a no-brainer. This is the uh, part where I would invite all of you guys to participate as much as you uh, would like uh, to help clarify some of the questions you might have, because remember, there's a good 50% approximately who are going to be TAs for the first time, so feel free to ask your questions. And TAs who've done this before, either once or numerous times before, if you have something that you feel that we can benefit from, please, uh, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll pick on you and you can uh, share your thoughts. So as an undergraduate TA, um, no, you, you cannot envision late an exam. 86% of you got it right. Um, a very, very brief percentage seems to think about 0.08% that uh, keeping a record of class attendance and participation is something you cannot do. That's in fact what you do most routinely. And I believe uh, some of our older TAs can testify to that. What is the maximum workload of an undergraduate TA? 96%, 20 hours per week. 2.4% um, thought that there's no uh, maximum you need to do with what the instructor asks. For the most part, yeah. Uh, that, that generally is how we've been sort of acclimatized to the role of a TA, that we do whatever the instructor asks. But believe it or not, you guys actually have a great deal of leeway in what you um, can and cannot do um, in terms of what's required of you. So yes, it's 20 hours a week. Um, let me come back to this a little later, but, but there's also a, that, that's not a, that is not to say that you can only do one TA shift with 20 hours a week, but there was another question that addressed that. So as an undergraduate TA, can I upload marks in Zimbabwe? To be honest, I'm actually surprised that so many undergraduate TAs uh, knew that because um, back when I was a TA, long time back, um, undergraduate TAs did do that, even, even though it was against policy. Not officially, they didn't do it, but unofficially, it happened. Um, so yeah, so it, you're not uh, required to upload marks in Zimbabwe. In fact, you're discouraged from doing so. Um, so those who think technically I can, this was for for that portion. Yeah, I mean, technically, I suppose if the instructor asks you to do it, you might be able to do it. I don't know if there's any strict laws um, that prevent the instructor from asking you to do that. I would be the right person to um, ask. I think the RO is probably a better um, source for that information. But as far as I'm aware, it's discouraged. Can you be a TA for two courses at the same time? This is a question that comes up a lot. Um, and you can see that 38% think no and 54% think yes. Um, and the answer is yes, you, you can be a TA for more than one course at a time. However, you have to keep in mind the 20 hour rule, which was up here. So you can't work for more than 20 hours a week. Uh, that is to say you can have two TA shifts, which might be half TA shifts, which only require you to work 10 hours a week. Either there's only, let's say, below 20 students in that course, in which case you only get half a TA shift, or, um, 
there are more than let's say 50, 60, and there's multiple TAs. And so your workload is divided over several TAs. So if you can do 10 hours per week, um, then you can do more than one. You can, do even, you can possibly even do two TA shifts. But then later on, we run into all sorts of complications. If your 20 hours are being used up in TA shifts, can you then also be an RA or not? And as far as I'm aware, and please don't hold me to this, um, I would encourage you to ask the RO in HR. But as far as I'm aware, if you are, if you've used up your 20 hour block in either TA ship or R ship, then you won't be able to be, um, then you won't be able to do the other, uh, anything beyond 20, because you won't be paid for anything beyond 20 uh, by the HR. So even if you're doing more than 20 hours of work, um, well then that's just between you and the instructor. You're, you're doing more than 20 hours of work, but you're not required to do so. Yeah, Ramsha, so we can do two half-time tier ships. Yep, thank you, Dr. Suleiman, um, for clarifying that, yeah. So like I was saying, you can't be an RA for 20 hours and then uh, do two tier ships at the same time as well. Uh, so again, the, the rule of thumb here is that 20 hours is the, is the maximum, yeah. So either, I mean, it doesn't really matter what permutation of TA ship versus R ship you use to fulfill those 20 hours, but the 20 hours is the limit. Um, yeah, and this brings us to our last question. So part of my responsibilities as a TA is to grade minor course instruments. Yeah, overwhelmingly, most of you agree that, that that's what TAs do. Although there's a difference now between graduate TAs and undergraduate TAs. I have another question for you guys. Um, I think it'll take too much time to create a poll, but if I were to just ask you this question, you guys can uh, pop in your answers in the chat. Uh, as an undergraduate TA, can you grade a final exam? This is a trick question. Wow. Um, that's a lot of responses in the chat. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, so it, most of you have it half right. And there's a smattering of people in there who've clarified, who've qualified that uh, you can only do the MCQs part. That's absolutely the point I was trying to make. So for the most part, you cannot grade final exams as an undergraduate TA. You can only do the MCQ portion. Can graduate students, for the graduate students here, uh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Suleiman. Can the graduate students take uh, grade exams? Dr. Suleiman, if you're still here, can, can you clarify that question for us? Can graduate students grade exams? So neither graduate students nor TAs can grade final exams. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask another poll here. I'm going to give you another about 45 seconds to finish this um, simple poll. I just want to figure out what the distribution is. Okay, so Dr. Suleiman has a as a qualification and a clarification for uh, graduate students being able to grade final exams. He says that it's only in the presence of faculty and under strict guidelines. Most of our respondents have responded. Um, I'm gonna give this another 20 seconds. Last 10 seconds, guys. Thank you. So 89% of our audience today is uh, comprised of undergraduate TAs and 11% um, is graduate TAs. And if you remember back to the previous poll that we did, about 20% have done one course before 20, I think 2% have, or 23% have done more than one course and the rest have uh, never TA'd before. 
There's a question from Aisha Irfan. When we say graduate TAs, does it mean the course we are TAing or whether we are graduate students? Uh, no, it refers to your status as a student. Uh, are you an undergraduate student and then are you a graduate student? Yeah. Yeah, so this was the most uh, uh, dense part of what we were going to cover today. And uh, we have a little over half of our session remaining. I'd like to talk about um, some of our roles as, uh, let me just bring it up back here. And uh, it was really important to cover this part of it before we moved on to the presentation portion. Uh, so. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought as I was trying to bring up the presentation. Can any of the panelists let me know if uh, you can see the screen? We can. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So we have two things left that we, we want to talk about. So now that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are, it, it makes sense for us to now move on to, because this is a session on clear communication, how would we communicate with the instructor? Well, later on, we'll be talking about how we communicate with students as well. And how we communicate with the instructor really is born out of the role that we play and the expectation that the instructor has from us as a TA, right? So the the first and foremost thing that we need to do is clarify faculty expectations. You'd be surprised um, as to how varied faculty expectations are from course to course. And you'd be, again, surprised by how standard that faculty think that their expectation is uh, from the students. So what they expect of you, they may consider that to be standard uh, because they, don't, they may not know any better or that's how they've done it in the past. But for you, the expectation might turn out to be a complete surprise. It might just be a curveball that you hadn't really planned on dealing with. So it's really good to set those expectations from the start. Um, and, and again, the recommendation most TAs make, and, and perhaps many of the TAs here, about half of um, our audience today is, is, is comprised of former TAs. Maybe they would agree that the best thing to do is make sure you clarify your responsibilities at the beginning of the session. Um, that helps to avoid any miscommunication and misunderstandings that may arise later on. For example, uh, I'm not even talking about the most obvious things, for example, like you have to attend class and you have to mark attendance. Some faculty members or some instructors don't require that you do that, but others require that, that in fact, that is most of your role. Um, they don't require you to grade exams, they just require you to attend classes, mark attendance, perhaps mark CP. Um, whereas other faculty members need different sorts of classes and don't expect you to do that. But I'm not even talking about that obvious thing. I'm talking about more in terms of what sort of authority you have to communicate with students. What was something you could have said and what was something that was beyond the scope of services that the faculty has asked to perform. Um, those are some of the gray areas that we don't clarify in the beginning and then they may cause misunderstandings and problems later on. So again, so the first and foremost thing to do is to clear those expectations. The best way to do it in a traditional setting is to go meet the faculty member and ask them what their expectations are. Ask them straight up how, um, what their expectation is of you communicating with students. Does it need to be, you know, uh, in a certain tone? Are there certain areas that you won't talk about? Or do you not address, say, for example, grades? Um, what can you and can you not talk about, et cetera? And, and, and as is evident from the slides, faculty expectations are very varied. Now, all of the slides that you see today, they, I, at the end of it, I'll share the resource with you. These come from a book that TAs have written for TAs. So this is coming from TA experience. Um, so faculty expectations are very, very important. In an online setting, there are a few chats. Let me just see if I need to address any of them. Uh, can undergraduate TAs give bonus scores to students who have shown more passion than others and then later on inform the instructor that they did this? Um, I'm going to open this question up. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that's, do you guys think you can do that? Can you, just a yes or a no. Can you give bonus scores and then later on inform the faculty member that you've done that? 
That's an interesting yeah, thank question. You. Yeah, I mean, it is, but the answer is a resounding no. So thank yeah. you for all the participants. Uh, yeah, yeah, you most certainly should not do that. But if you have the authority to do that, excuse me, then, then that authority can only come from the instructor. If, yeah, if all the other conditions are met, because remember, you're not even allowed to check final exams. So I don't think, I, th I think this would fall very far beyond the scope of what's permissible as a GA. But let's say the faculty did give you permission to grade a particular exam or test. I don't want to confuse anybody by saying exam. So let, let's say an instrument, um, a quiz or something, right? They would have to define what is beyond your scope of services and what is, uh, what is within your scope of services. Do you have to follow a strict key? Most likely faculty members will give you a key uh, that you need to follow. In some cases, you may need to create your own key. But these are exactly the sort of expectations that need to be set early on in the course with the faculty members. If a student has put in extraordinary effort and their exam results simply aren't, you know, reflecting that, what do you do? It may not be as black and white as do I give them a score or not for effort, but what, what should I do? Should I spend more time on them? You know, if I spend more time on them, other TAs may suffer. And that's another um, scenario that we'll come to a bit later. But these are the sort of expectations that you need to set with faculty members to avoid confusion um, later on down the road. So let's look at a few situations um, and then some strategies to deal with those situations. And this is a situation which comes up fairly often. And again, I'm going to ask you uh, in in the poll for those, especially especially for those TAs who have done this before, 22% um, of you have done one course and about 23%, I guess, unless I'm totally uh, mis misremembering that, have done more than one course. Have you ever encountered a situation in which um, you found it difficult to manage the workload between your own courses and the workload as a TA, those 20 hours or 10 hours? And I'm just going to bring up the poll and allow you to respond there. And again, I'll give it a minute. I'm really curious as to how this turns out because TAs are, for, at least for undergraduate students, they're juniors and seniors, if I'm not mistaken and you have to have a certain cutoff in terms of GPA um, and other, I guess, requirements before you join. So you've demonstrated or you have a demonstrable history of uh, showing that you can manage uh, a workload or a taxing workload. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if too many of you haven't encountered it, but I would be surprised if very few people have encountered this before. So we have about half of the respondents who responded and that's commensurate with the numbers who've PA'd before. So that's quite all right. Uh, I'm going to end the poll and share the results with you guys. So 40% yes, and about 59% no. And we have one respondent. So this was completely anonymous who clicked on yes, I'd like to share my experience with some of the newer TAs here. I don't know who this respondent is. So I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand and one of the panelists can unmute you. Panelists, can you check and see if there's any raised hands? Unfortunately, I can't see. Yes, it's Anam, Anam Mashhood, yes. I'm allowing can her. Can we unmute her, please? Yes. Anam, you are Go allowed ahead, to talk. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, it was like, the, I've done one DA shift before, and that was like uh, within the transition to the online semester. So that was a challenging task in itself because, you know, we didn't have that sort of blueprint or outline how to go about quizzes or how to basically uh, guide the other students as well. So I had to work with the instructor to sort of you know, create a mechanism where we could understand and you know also maintain the integrity of the course so that was a difficult task and which is why i wanted to attend the webinar because there were a lot of issues um, that arrived at that time but regarding workload and all of that 
the thing is that um you when you decide to do a tship i think a better idea is to see what your courses in are and how they fit in with your schedule so mostly like even this time um the tship i'm doing usually on that day i don't have many other courses so um that is one of the things that you can look to uh, you know to see whether you can balance the workload or not and but then those would be i'm sorry if i'm off but wouldn't those be things that you look at before you begin the tuition i guess what we're trying yeah. to address yeah, yeah, for the sake of everybody here is yeah how would you address yeah. it after after it's begun you know after you've said okay i'll be responsible uh, for this after you've committed yeah so i guess when you see um the when the semester takes off you know it's it's really hard mm -hmm. you really struggle with your health as well so it's just um i think when you have taken up the responsibility as a ta it's better that if you face any difficulties you communicate it to the instructor during the like the course like when you are free like in past in the past time no we had uh, we had to arrange office hours online as well and there were other issues like you know connect, internet connectivity issues with students and then we had to resolve them as well that you know those students who and did that work for you yeah it did that work for you um, speaking and, to and, the instructor but, that but, you worked with yeah yeah it did so it's it's like um uh, it depends from instructor to instructor as you said so if you're yeah. clear about um you know the expectations that the instructor has from you then i think it becomes a bit easier to manage thank you thank you um anam right yeah thank you for that yeah so like anam said it's um from anam's response i think two things are clear one you should speak to your instructor um and you should do so sooner rather than later and the thing that i would like to emphasize is as a ta you have to be roles right so the first and foremost responsibility that you have is to yourself your student um, and you owe it to yourself you owe it to your uh, your instructors your teachers your parents your family you owe it to everybody to perform to the best of your ability and if you find that your duties as a ta are conflicting with that then um, then you need to prioritize your own grades and but you need to do so in a mature and responsible manner because uh, let me just remind ourselves that we have committed to the ta trip right so the best thing to do would be to speak to somebody to ask for help possibly talk to your academic advisor and i know most of us don't and it's just a formality you know it's just a thing that we get emailed about that we have to do so but we never do we never take it up some of us find that they're ineffective others just can't be bothered and for those of us who do and i can i can testify to this from personal experience Uh, it it works wonders whenever i would have you know, a difficult situation i would go to the academic advisor and the academic advisor would help me understand the fact of the members perspective or other people's perspective um, and advise me on my best course of action so talk to your academic advisor after that or before that or simultaneously talk to the instructor uh, and this is the instructor that you're ta in front of excuse me alha dr sulman wanted to say something so i took at you uh go ahead doctor can we allow him to talk he is allowed to or is he just chatting thank you thank you tala i sorry for disturbing you here but i thought there were some important remarks you were making so uh, as a uh, as as a faculty member but also as your team member uh, i would like to sort of you know extend your your your, your remarks and the first and the Please most do. important that you know as a part of learning institute Uh, and the pedagogical committee which was working on the guidelines for tas and the faculty members uh, we have made it very clear uh, to faculty members that uh, they cannot expect a heroic uh, and extraordinary uh, uh, things from the from the tas you know they uh, it is very important that tas uh, and the faculty members needs to be very transparent uh, and and about the workload and more importantly i would highly recommend tas that uh, spend some extra time in the first two weeks with your faculty members to get a very clear lecture plans you know so you know that what are the special lectures where the quizzes would happen where, where where when the midterm is where the guest lectures are where your extensive input is required so that you can plan your uh, your your sessions accordingly in the past that was that, that was that was not an issue uh, but sometimes some instructors there that you have to be present in every class some instructors there no whenever there is a quiz you have to be present well when the quiz is uh, could you please tell me now and then instructor would say no uh, i'll let you know when the time come but this is the time you work with them you help them understand look you know uh this is not the uh, you know uh, the last year 
that is a different world uh, so for us it is very important to know that how the whole structure core structure would would look like and you you will see that in 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 the upcoming uh, session uh, you will be talking about the course outline and i will recommend you uh, as a uh, as a trainer today but also as a faculty member to work with me if you are my ta please make sure that you work with me and then you get a get all the answers in the first one two weeks when the workload is low and you know okay, how the whole structure how the whole course uh, should look like and this will give you a lot of control over the course and then you can plan your life in a, in a very important way that's very important in my opinion if you want to have a very balanced uh, work life uh, and work uh, ac academic balance otherwise uh, this randomness uh, would actually bring a lot of uh, fatigue and burnout uh, and and no one is going to get benefit neither me as an instructor nor you as a ta so that that was my two cents sorry for intervening no no not at all uh, for those of you wondering uh, and those of you unfamiliar with dr suleiman dr suleiman is the director of the learning institute and he's also a faculty member at the school of science and engineering um, i mean i can't say this officially but um, from my personal experience he has the biggest ta team i've ever seen um, and he does, he's working with tas and ras just throughout um, so thank you dr suleiman for for your input on that uh, in the interest of time i'm just going to go through the next scenario a, a bit more quickly and that's also a scenario which comes up quite often it's when you don't agree with the professor's criteria and i'm referring now to the grading criteria and i'm referring to the specific case where you as a ta are instructed to grade let's say mcqs or or short answers or something like that a small uh, a small instrument and uh, you don't necessarily agree with it either either before the grading begins or um, as a result of having begun the grading after having marked exams maybe you feel for example our previous question where a student had put in a lot of effort and you feel that they deserve marks but um professor isn't allowing it so you don't agree with the professor's grading criteria again uh i'm just out of curiosity i want to know how many people have experienced this situation before so i'm just going to ask this time i'm going to keep the poll to about 45 seconds and that'll help me understand whether we need to spend more time on this or just uh move on incidentally polls are I i'm sorry if it feels like they're overused today but because we're on zoom or online it's really difficult especially when unfortunately all of your mics are muted and you don't get a chance to speak it's really difficult for me to assess as an instructor or as a as a panelist what the sentiments are what you feel I should address more or whether i'm just droning on and on uh, and the polls help us to do that and that's something that you can do and not only as a ta um, but also you can advise your instructors to do when they're teaching online so um can you give it another 10 seconds i said 30 but i gave it a almost an entire minute we have about 90 responses so far yeah i'm just going to end it and to share the results So a 52% say that yes they've been in this situation. I know it's a bit of a trick question because I said as a student or as a TA so many of you might just disagree with your marks as students uh, and not necessarily as TAs. There's a and 48% haven't been in the situation where they feel this. There's a question let me see if I need to address that before we move on. Um panelists I can't open up the question right now so if, if you guys can look at it just address it if it needs to be addressed thank you um okay so in the case where you disagree with the professor it might not it may not be the case that professor is necessarily wrong or that you necessarily need to do something about it right so the best thing to do would be to ask clarifying questions of the professor so that you get a better idea of what they're looking for because they may be achieving a different objective to the objective that you had in mind Um, the the lens through which you're viewing the situation your your result as a um, the conclusion that you reach as a result of viewing the situation from that particular vantage point you may be right uh, but the professor might be looking at things very differently they might have a different objective in mind and hence it's very important to understand what they're thinking so make sure you do that please uh i would encourage this very very much please do not 
let your sentiments be known to the, to the class at large, because this will sow discord and this will create complications for you in the future, because you will distinctly be sending a message very different from that of the professor. Uh, and we tend to fall into this trap, especially when we do disagree very vehemently, or if we have um, friends in class that we're teeing for. And so it becomes very difficult to separate our sentiments from, from the situation. And this would take away from the learning experience. This would just serve to isolate or solidify the person's, the aggrieved party's opinion even more. You know, DAB made us out the that the professor go, hey, yes. So <laughs> it doesn't make for a very good learning experience. So, um, which brings us to communicating with students. And there's a, there's a few strategies for doing that as well. Um, the most often case that we, we, we hear is, how do you deal with academic dishonesty? Um, I, I'm sorry, guys, we're a little short on time. So I, I would have liked for you guys to be more involved in, in a discussion in this, but I'm gonna run through one or two scenarios really quickly, just so that you know that these are common and that they happen and that if they should happen to you, that it's not the end of the world and it's happened before and you know how to deal with it. So sort of an FAQ of uh, the most common situations that you find yourself in. So this happens. Um, there's a lot of, uh, we students hire a lot of people to write their papers. One of the best ways, there's very little that you can do to prevent dishonesty from happening. Uh, but one of the best ways to do it is to detect it early on and to be very vocal about it. So if you've, detect, if you've detected a case of dishonesty, um, while maintaining the, you know, the privacy and the integrity of whomever you might suspect of dishonesty, it's important to announce to the class at large that there was a suspected case of dishonesty and it's being investigated, just so that everybody's aware that if you find these cases, uh, you do investigate them and you do follow through on whatever the standard operating procedures are to do so. That prevents a lot of people from falling into the trap of, of doing it. Nobody does it. People rarely do it because they're fundamentally dishonest. As human beings, we're not fundamentally dishonest. Fundamentally, we're honest people. And we don't like cheating if we, if we have an option. Most often it happens out of procrastination or laziness when we put things off too far and when we have other things to deal with. Um, so it's a shortcut, and that's when these things happen. So we can ward it off. We can prevent it from happening. Um, the one thing, you know, again, you have very limited say in creating the assignments themselves. The instructor has more of a say in this, but one way to do it is to get more creative with the assignments. Um, another way to do it is to get feedback during the assignment when it's being, uh, you know, let's say it's an essay when it's being written. This gives you an idea of whether or not the participants are doing their own work. Um, another way to detect, detect it after it's happened is if there's a significant jump, you know, in their writing style or communication style. Another quite uh, frequent situation that you might find yourself in is um, when students come to office hours unprepared. Um, <laughs> Again, the best way to deal with this situation is to empathize. Empathize with the student. Don't empathize with them being unprepared. Empathize with the factors that led them to being unprepared. Um, most people, believe it or not, aren't doing it habitually. Most people are not doing it uh, because they're lazy. Um, some people just, there's an initial threshold that they have to overcome in order to begin an assignment. And they're just unable to overcome that. And that's why they're there. That happened to me quite frequently. So um, asking them probing questions is a good idea to get them started instead of investing so much of your time. Um, another situation is students taking advantage of you in office hours. You might be disproportionately spending some time on one student as opposed to another. There's, uh, 
Uh, Mohammed Hassan Sanjit, you had a question. Uh, in the case that you have discussed a particular subject with another instructor and that instructor also agrees with your point of view, what shall one do? Uh, agree with what? I, I'm not sure I follow. If you could just clarify in, in the chat, that would work. hasn't clarified yet, so I guess we'll just move on. Yeah, so when a student's work is ambiguous, I just thought I'd give you time to sort of go through the scenario while I was trying to address the question. This often happens for a lack of clarity, for a lack of direct directions. Most often this is the case, although there are other factors, obviously. But if that's the case, then providing more clear directions is the best way to go about doing it. That really brings us to the end of the talk. I'm going to use my last few minutes to open it up for questions. If anybody has a question, please feel free to ask. I think there's... So uh, please feel free to ask your questions and we'll unmute you and you can speak. I was referring to the key of the quiz. Let me just go back and read your comment again. Um, if anyone in the case that to, you have discussed the oh, Okay. No, no, I was just yeah, go ahead, say, Fatma, please, go ahead. if anyone wants to talk, just raise your hand, we'll unmute you and allow you to talk. Oh, you're talking about another instructor other than the one that... Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky situation. Uh, what do you do if you're working with instructor A I think that's what you mean, right, Hassan? Let me just let me just make sure I've understood the question. What do you do if you're working with instructor A and you have um, a different opinion about the about grading, let's say about the key that you use to grade, and another instructor, instructor B, agrees with you? <laughs> really, there's nothing for it. It's a tricky situation. Um, the instructor might very well be wrong and could possibly do from the input of, of you and instructor B, but that's not a good situation to be in. Instructor A has the authority. Instructor, this is instructor A's of course. They know what they're doing. And if they feel a particular way, then they're entitled to feel that way. And they have the complete authority to act on that. So I think it'll just become a weird and messy triangle if you involve another instructor. Probably not a good idea. Um, and it'll also, I'm sure instructor A would also find it very insulting to be judged by you know, a third party on their own subject or how they're doing things. And that'll lead to resentment. I mean, if you want to work with that instructor again, don't do that. Um, Talha, we have another question. Uh, and the question is how and where to hold office hours in online semester? Oh, that's a good question. The honest answer is I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how to answer that, but I can um, address, I can, I can redirect Dr. you to, to has a response. Yeah, I was just about to ask to say that. So before I, Dr. Suleiman, we open it up for him, you can look at the, Fatma, are we going to be providing a bundle of resources? Uh, we will at the end of the session, all three sessions, but okay, so right now we have Dr. Suleiman's response and then we have Kaniz Amna who wants to say something. Okay, can we open it up for Dr. Suleiman first? Um, yes. Maybe responding to this question. Yes, Dr. Suleiman, go ahead. That's a brilliant question, by the way. And uh, there are three important things which we are trying. There are no university-wide rule right now for these, uh, for that how would you uh, go about uh, setting up your office hours? Uh, but there are two or three rules uh, which university has been discussing. And that's why I think it's a very important thing that Zarish brought up this question. Uh, uh, sorry, I think it was Zarish, I think, or maybe someone else. So, uh, so first of all, uh, you can use the same uh, platform uh, as, uh, uh, as it was being used for your class. It can be Zoom, uh, it can be, uh, you know, uh, any other synchronous channel, it can be Google Meet, uh, because Google Meet would allow you to have uh, without any restriction, because in Zoom, you can only have 40 minutes meeting. In the case of Google Meet, you can have unlimited meetings. 
so you can use uh, one of these one of these channels uh, for uh, for setting up office hours. Uh, these office hours, uh, very important thing is that these office hours have to be communicated. They cannot be, and we really are insisting in this. They cannot be at odd timings. Uh, so the, the so you cannot say at night at 11 or 10 o'clock my class is finished. So I will have office hours. Like, no, this is not allowed. uh you need to find a respectful time uh, especially uh if if there is a mixed group uh and uh, some of the uh, group members are uncomfortable uh because of the gender because of any other reason uh, uh any other reason they are uncomfortable in 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 coming online late uh, no ta can force it uh this is a this will be a legal document coming out also so no ta can force that uh, and odd office hours and timing and thirdly uh to make a more transparency to your office hours or especially when the discussions are happening or when there's a conflict resolution uh, you can take a consent uh in the beginning of the meeting and record the meeting so you can say uh, am i i'm going to record the meeting are you allowed that and somebody say yes 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 then you can also record the meeting and save it uh, but then that, that meeting has to be destroyed afterwards that again has to be agreed on so dr suleiman we have another question sure sure please that i feel like you might be able to address so we have an uh, anonymous attendee asking if you repeatedly find the instructor non responsive to student queries how should a ta handle the situation especially if the instructor is not responding to the ta as well so very good question and this time a uh, university uh, will not going to tolerate this uh, what we have done for example in cs department we have made a cs help desk uh, we have also asked uh, other faculty uh, other schools to make a similar help desk Uh, if you think uh, this is not working uh, you know you can send an email to the dean of the school or maybe start with the department chair if the department chair is engaged in this activity you can go to the dean uh, and if the dean is not doing it i assure you and uh, this is being recorded you can send an email to the vice chancellor uh, and or, or i did to the provost uh, the dr farhad and dr jadoon and i we assure you uh, all these things would be listened uh, we are we are very particular about these things we have worked very hard to make sure that all the standards are met and if as a as a ta if you have a genuine valid concern as a student you have a genuine valid concern please uh, uh, talk to your the academic the top academic officer of the university and that's your provost and the vice provost uh, but uh, try to resolve it you know at the dean level at a at a department level but if you think uh, that uh, this can bring troubles for you and you want to stay anonymous then dr farah dr jadoon would be the ideal person because we guarantee uh, that they will uh, everything they will they will handle uh, it will be anonymous thank you thank you so much for that uh talha we are really another... above the time it's 2:05 yeah. yeah we are um for the participants who feel that their questions are still unanswered if you please feel free to email um either one of us myself what my michelle or my you and we'll try and get back to your answers because uh, we would really like for you to have your answers and unfortunately time doesn't permit at the moment we've sort of eaten into your break the next session will start at 2:15 um promptly my apologies for eating into your break but th those were such brilliant questions um so the break is now for 10 minutes and if you still have questions uh i'll try and keep addressing them here in the chat in the meantime please email your questions you. to lli@lamstart.edu.pk i've just shared in the chat you can ask the questions uh, kanees please email us your question and we'll try to address it if not we'll respond to it personally thank you thank you to dr suleiman for popping in from time to time to explain um, thank you dr suleiman we'll be joining you guys at 215 again please enjoy your break that's it from my side i'll come back towards the end inshallah Thank you guys for participating.